Hello and welcome to the third part of the tutorial series from GameMaker to Godot. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. As you can see on the title, today we're gonna talk about how does Godot get made and why is that better than GameMaker. Many of you might already know how open source works, so this could be a little bit redundant. But when I started making video games with GameMaker, I wasn't really into open software. It's something that I got when I started getting into the community and all. And it's the biggest advantage that I believe Godot has over GameMaker. And that's something that it will never be possible for yo-yo games to get to the same level with Godot. When I started making this series, I started using the version 3.1 of Godot, which is currently under development. And the updates in Godot go really, really fast. There's a lot of people working on it. There's thousands of contributors that are working to improve every feature of it. And that's something that yo-yo games will never be able to afford, especially because yo-yo games only works on features with the team that they can hire and that's limiting for them. So this week while I was thinking about making the new episode, a new feature came out. You can go to the news here on the website and see all the updates that they announce or the events that are happening regarding Godot. This is very similar to the Yoyo Games blog where you can see all the updates. And if you notice here by the, the rate of updates is not really, really substantial. They do a lot of updates, but are mostly marketing related. And those are good. But of course, if you're working with the engine, there's not a lot that you really find useful here, especially nothing as big as this update. What is this new update that I wanted to talk to you about? This is the new file system doc for the version 3.1. So you can see now it's looking way more similar to what GameMaker Resource 3 is. And yeah, it's, it's a feature developed by a member of the community and this was pushed for the new version. And it's looking great, but if you want to download this version, you will need to do very, very weird stuff. That's where this website I love comes into place. This is the unofficial Godot engine builds. This will be creating daily builds. This is something similar to what the beta channel, channel on the Game Maker Studio updates uh, do. So this basically, you get the latest version. It's not great for doing a serious project because you're gonna run into the latest bugs and it's not recommended only for testing or to check out the latest features but you can download your binaries here and run it in windows mac or linux for the tutorials i will be using the latest version available all the time i want this to be future facing i don't want it to get obsolete soon and that's something that you will find in many many tutorials that are already available for, uh, for godot the development goes so fast there are so many features added, uh, added and everything is improving at a very fast pace that is hard to, to keep making resources for the people and keep updating them. So you will find a lot of tutorials that are using previous versions of Godot. They should be fine for you to use, but you have to take that into account when you're going to create a new project. When I started working and using GameMaker seriously for my day-to-day -day development, I found out that there's not really a good way of reporting or handling the bugs that you encounter. Joyo Games uses this uh, Mantis uh, tracker, which will track all the issues that the engine has. And when I reported a few issues, they were not placed in this board. I'm not sure if I needed to add more information or they never got back to me and you will inevitably run into those issues. There are things that you cannot foresee, but you will find some issues with some native functions, some unexpected behavior, and that's something you cannot ever fix by yourself in Game Maker. You cannot go to the source code and make those edits or no one that knows how to do it will have the time to dedicate that to you. And that's not happening in Godot, at least in my experience. Godot, since it's open source, the code is all posted here in GitHub. Uh, you can download it, edit, modify anything you want from the editor that you don't like. You can fix any bug that you have and you can keep working with that. So that means that 
it's also future proof. Let's imagine for a second that Yoyo Games just goes out of business, they don't have any money to pay for their developers, and how are you gonna keep working on your games if you find an issue that it's not possible to fix? Imagine that there's a new Windows version that is not uh, that the games compiled with the old game maker versions are not working with. This would not happen in Godot because you can always keep developing those features. You can always compile it in all the platforms that you are capable of. And yeah, it's it's basically a much better environment to base your business around. If you want to go to the issues here, you see all and every issues that are reported. These are the bugs that people find. As you can see, they are created by several different people. Um, you will find the community is very, very large. You see here all the tickets that were closed, the ones that are open and the milestones, which are the versions with the updates. Right now, the version that it's available to download from the website, which is considered the stable, is a 3.0. And you can see there are only 10 open tickets to that. And the next version, which everyone is super excited, which is the one that I'm covering in this tutorial series, is the 3.1. And it's very close to completion. There's only 900 tickets open. If you see here, the tickets are reported by different people and they are also fixed by different contributors. Um, if you find any problem, I recommend you to create an issue here you can create them on github and just make sure that before creating one you search if it already exists or not so you don't create the duplicate one and yeah from my experience i created several uh, issues and they were all fixed very quickly unfortunately i'm not very good with c so i wasn't able to jump into the code myself and fix it but i try to do my best every time i report something um, people were able to fix it. If you see here in the insights of the project, you can see all the contributors and how many lines of code they contributed to. And you see like these are the most active users, but there are many, many developers that are working in small features on every corner of the editor, which makes it super good for you to use. And if you go now to see the issues in the game maker, so you cannot report the bugs directly here. You cannot see a lot about what is going on with them. How are they gonna? Are, how are they being fixed? And you can see that the names here are not a lot of people. They are a big team, of course, of people, but it's impossible for them to be at the same level that Godot is right now. Just by looking at the change log. If you see the bugs fixed for different versions are very minimal if you compare them to the big milestones they have here with 5400 tickets closed for a big version it's it's breathtaking the amount of dedication that all the community has about this and will make your life easier this is basically helping you focus on making the games and having a good environment to work with. So now let's go back to our example from before and let's see what the changes are in this new layout. So you can see here the file system change is like this. You can see all the folders and the resources inside of them with a little preview like you do in Game Maker. And it, before it was like this, which is, I don't know, not ideal. I I don't really like this version, but I don't really mind having it. So if your project was created before this version, you will have the layout like this. But if you create a new project, the layout, the default layout will be different. By now, you should be more or less familiar with what the elements are here. The scene, the inspector, the file system. But another great stuff that you have here is that you can modify the position for those elements. You don't really have to have them in this setup. So you could click here on these three dots on the tab and you can select the dock position. And these are the places that are already being used. So if I want to have the scene here at the top and the import as well at the top, 
to have the inspector here really big because I maybe you want to see all the options available just at a glance and here you have these three tabs and then you want to see the file system and the scene no problem you select the file system you select select the dock position here at the bottom and you have them move you can also if you want to do it easier drag and drop and drag and drop stuff between places and you can also have them all on one side maybe you want all these here and the nodes here just whatever you prefer and yeah this is a great way of organizing your tools in the best way right now i think this is the standard which will be the node here and the file system down here so i'm gonna try to get used to the new way of doing things you can also find a lot of extra settings here on the editor settings this would be the same as the game maker editor settings but you will find here a lot of options if you compare them to uh, from the theme you can change the editor theme let's see a wise sort of like this one i really like it's very bright outside and you want to see the elements on your screen uh, you could also make them yourself here on the themes you can create a custom one um, or just go back to the default which is fine with me then everything you want to have like here the, the text editor uh, highlighting cursor everything grid map 3d 2d what the guides look like this is just a great array of options to have and yeah just I encourage you to go through them and change them in whatever way you like. I think that's it for this video. I don't want to cover many different topics, but I will cover some some great features on the next video. The one that I will the ones that I will like to cover are the sync scene changes and script changes uh, for the debug options. And tell me if you want anything else. Uh, thank you for the comments. I really appreciate them, uh, the likes and the subscribes. And see you next time. Bye.